Hello and welcome back to Plugin Along, a stream dedicated to Lotro plugins. Last time on Plugin Along, we modified the opaque quest tracker plugin to allow the player to choose which corner the unlock icon appeared in, and we shipped the changes out to lotrointerface.com as a patch. Um, so far, it looks like around 500 people have downloaded it since, uh, since last week, and no problems reported so far, so that's very promising. Today, we're going to revisit the Minster Buff plugin. Uh, I was really hasty with my incorporation of some updated translations that I hadn't verified myself, and some users have reported problems with that. So we're going to walk through the steps you take to get skill translations from the various Lotro clients, and uh, use that to verify for ourselves what's good, what's bad, uh, and update those files. Um, and it's been a while since we've looked at um, launching the German client, the French client, so it's it's about time. So an advanced warning for, uh, for those of you watching live, I'm going to have to restart the client to change languages. You can't do it while you are playing. So you're going to see my desktop or a transition screen more often than usual. <laughs> anyway, as always, feel free to jump into chat with your thoughts and questions. And in the meantime, let's take a look at where we are. Oh, hey, there's a warband. Neat. Uh, so. Um, some of the skills that I'm interested in checking out are related to war mounts. And so I need to be on a server that has war mounts available. I play a lot on Treebeard, which currently is maxed out at level 60, which gives us legendary items, but no war mounts. So I'm back here on Evernight and just outside the town of Snowburn, and we're going to do some skill looking here. All right. So... New quest to defeat cramp. No, I don't think I will do that. I'm just going to remove that. Hmm. Um, neat. Okay, uh, so just to review where we are, let's pop open the plugin manager. And we have here the Minstro Buff plugin. Now, when it first loads, it's going to load in the upper left corner. And the Soliloquid Tracker, if we're using that, will also launch there. Now, this is using your combat chat log to monitor for changes. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and set up a chat window so we can see those same things. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and say I have all the tabs I can get. So we're going to go ahead and... Delete this advancement tab. I don't know what it is. I'll probably regret that later. That's okay. Create a new tab. And in this tab, we're going to rename it to Combat Stuff. And in Combat Stuff, we're going to go ahead and change the filters to show Combat Player, stuff I'm doing. So that lets us... Oh, I'm going to need things to target, aren't I? Where am I? Where is Stuff? All right, I'm guessing, hey, your stuff. Okay, so when I use the minor ballad, we're seeing something called uh, Tideless, my character, scored a hit with minor ballad on the half-orc invader for stuff. Now, um, if we were using combat monitoring uh, for the minstrel buff side of things, we would be looking for this here. Instead, what Minstrel Buffs does is it looks at the effect list on the player. Now, the way it does it, I'm not a super fan of, but that's okay. Uh, we're not here to change that. We're just here to look at localizations. So it looks like there's plenty of half forks out here around Snowburn for us to play around with. Also, if you're in Resident Stance, you can use Major Ballad without getting into combat with something. Okay. So, um, what we can do is we can pull up what the plugin is currently doing and how it's looking for these effects and see what we need to do to fix this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a text editor. Uh, in this case, I'm using Sublime Text, but really anything uh, more than Notepad is probably going to be enough for this. So, we're going to go ahead and open up. Let's see, documents, Lord of the Rings Online, plugins, minstrel buffs, minstrel buff window, and where do we go for this? Well, um, 
there is a strings file, but I happen to know that I added that uh, for the soliloquist spirit stuff. So it doesn't have everything else yet. Let's go ahead and check out minstrel effects. That sounds plausible. Okay, so what we have here are the names of stuff that we're looking for. A valid anthem, valid codas, valid skill names, that sort of thing. And we can see them in German and French as well. Now, all problem with this way of doing localization, it's, it's mostly fine, but what I do see is that if you wanted to support another language, uh, then anywhere that uses these things has to be changed. So for instance, if I do, sorry, uh, I'm gonna do a recursive search. I'm gonna add the folder of minstrel buffs, and I'm gonna say, who uses this? And actually we can see it's only used in one place. Uh, so this function would have to be changed though if we were adding Russian or any other languages that Lotra may eventually support, probably won't support any new languages, but if it did. Uh, so that's a thought I have is on the one hand, the chance of a new language coming in, very low. But on the other hand, I do, I do think that there are some Russian players um, and I'm not sure how that works, but this specific system is not very extra language friendly compared to some of the other ones I've seen. That's okay. Um, the important thing is we have a function is valid major ballad skill. Um, we probably have some other ones. Is valid cry skill, is valid coda skill, get anthem effect position. Um, so we have things that are using all of these. Um, uh, tables for French, German, and English of stuff. Awesome. Um, that suggests we're in the right place. So a thing I would like to do then is to see where are we getting the string to compare against this? Okay, um, let's, what are we looking at? We're looking at ballads, right? Ballad. Okay, ballad effects. Excellent. Ah, so it's looking here and we see ballad healing bonus. Okay. Yes, neat. Okay, that's a valid ballot effect. And we can see some more seed stuff here as well. Okay, so where does valid ballot effects EN get used in the code? Let's do a recursive search. We might have already been there. Is valid ballot effect. Okay, let's do a search for that. Okay, it's being used in a couple of places. Oh, no, just the function definition and its use in main.lua. Okay, so we're checking as we iterate through. Okay, we have sorted effects, which is sorting the effects list. Awesome. So it looks like we have a function called get name on each effect. So what we could do is go ahead and just say, um, I want to spit this out to uh, the standard output. So we can do that with turbine dot shell dot right line. And if you ever forget what your what that looks like, you can always pull open the API interface. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I have it saved locally. You can also get to it on the uh, Lotro wiki. Sorry, Lotro interface wiki. And turbine shell and the shell method uh, right line. And it's going to take some text. Neat. And that takes in text, puts it into the chat window in standard text. That's the only way you can intentionally put stuff into chat. All right, uh, turbine.shell.writeline, and we want effect get name. Now, it would be nice to know that we've switched between calls to this function, because this could get called uh, several times per second. It's one of the reasons I don't really like this method is the effects list changes much more rapidly than the things that we're looking for but that's okay. Iterating through, checking each one, it's it's fine. This is fine. Uh, or at least I don't feel like it negatively impacts my gameplay, but I, I, if I were trying to write this myself, I might not do it this way. But it's easy for me to say, I'm not trying to write it. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and output some dashes and that'll put an obvious break between calls to this function. Okay. We've made some changes. We need to remember to unload our plugin and then reload it. 
And then, hey, we get an error. What did I do? Okay, <laughs> main um, 238, I did something wrong. Okay, so this is a gotcha. Sometimes an effect in the effect list can be null. Great, <laughs> that's lovely. Um, oh no, I've done it before uh, we've gotten the effect. Um, so maybe maybe they can't be null, but that variable definitely was null because effect hadn't been set yet. That's um, that's definitely in my bad. I was thinking uh, wrongly. Okay, so we've got that open, and if I go ahead and activate my major ballad, we can see I've called that function half a dozen times easily already. Uh, and the important thing is the ballad healing bonus. And we can see that that fell off. It only lasts for, I'm gonna guess nine seconds. Let's see. No, it, right, it expires after nine seconds. So we can see that ballad healing bonus. We can see it up here. Uh, expires about a combat for nine seconds. It doesn't actually give you a clock because that's very variable and it's gone. Okay, cool. So we have a way now to get the text that the plugin is uh, going to see and we can compare that against the text in minstrelfex.lua. Perfect. Okay, now, if I'm going to... I'm getting very inspiring Rohan music. I hope that's not too loud on your end. Let me know if it is. You know, I've been playing Untreviated so much, I've just forgotten how much I enjoy both the aesthetics of Rohan and also the music. It's pretty cool. Okay, so we go ahead and defeat that half orc with minor ballad, and we can see the ballad damage bonus. Awesome. I need another half orc or something. Oh, good. Here we have a full blown orc. What are you doing in the sunlight? And then we have a ballad power bonus. Perfect. Those are the things we would expect to see from minor ballad, major ballad, and perfect ballad. In fact, if I were the commenting type, and I am, I would go ahead and say that's minor ballad. Uh, this is uh, major? No. Perfect. Perfect ballad. And this is major ballad. Awesome. Now, we also have, I mean, one of the reasons I'm here in Rohan is you can also do things on a war steed. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that, that looks like here. Uh, on my war steed, which is, I want to say max level. It's been a while since I've looked at it. Thanks, Treebeard. Um, but we can see Dirge, Saga, and Chant. Neat. I wonder if I have skills that match that. Ballad Dirge. Awesome. I needed a valid target. All right. Let's go find a valid target. All right. All right. So we can see that I do have the effect Dirge. Awesome. Now, a concern I have... Am I still in combat? No. Okay. Um, a concern I have is how do I get... Oh, I can do other trait specs. Awesome. How many mythical or loacher points does it take to unlock a trait spec, I wonder? Five hundred and fifty-six. Is that per a character? No, for all characters on your account. What is it? Why is it not under account? Yeah. Anyway, organizing things is hard. Um, I'm gonna hold off on that. Um, I think I can just go ahead and change trait specs to here. It's been a while since I've been on a mounted comma suite. Okay, so. Um, Dirge, uh, I think I was probably on right, uh, uh, sorry, on um, the light blue. We're gonna go to medium, that is hard to read, uh, medium green here, and get back on our mount and see what we get. Ballad Dirge also. Is it based on, oh, maybe it's based on this. 
Oh, there we go. Ballad chant. Ballad saga. Okay, this is going to be very exciting when we get back to here on Treebeard. Okay, Dirge. Uh, that is hard to read that tooltip when my window is on top of it. Nope, that is a big tooltip. Hang on. <laughs> Move over. Discipline Red Dawn. Okay. Uh, I'm going to switch back to my trade spec that's actually specced out. Give me all the things. Great. Um, and then the final one was Discipline Ritter Mark. Oh, I'm sorry, the middle one. Discipline Rohirrim and Discipline Ritter Mark. I have to say, I don't understand mounted combat in Lord of the Rings Island nearly as much as I understand footed combat. Uh, I, I, I did okay when I was playing a hunter, but when I switched over to Minstrel, it just uh, felt much more effective to just run up and scream at whatever it was than it, than it was to get on the war mount and then run around screaming that way. So I, I don't have a lot of Minstrel experience on uh, war mounts. Okay, so we know where these things are coming from, and that's... Uh, I'm doing this here in the English client because everything's just a little bit harder when it comes to uh, doing things on a client that you don't speak the language for. The buttons are different, the, the uh, chat commands are different, so we're doing some prep work here so that when we switch over to another one, we know what buttons we want to push to generate the thing. Okay. So... Anthems are another interesting thing. Um, these anthems, there, there's a lot of historical cruft in this plugin where there are things that aren't necessarily available anymore. Uh, like I feel like Anthem of Prowess maybe? Uh, so some, of the, some of the anthems, some of the things are no longer uh, available uh, is my understanding. And so uh, that can be a little bit like, how do I get this thing? How do I translate this thing? Well, you're not going to. You're not going to be able to check. But I'm hesitant to remove any of them because uh, I don't want to break any existing functionality that assumes that they are there. Okay. Um, anthem of. So one of the things that I'm going to do here is pull up the Lotro interface page for Minstrel Buffs where there are some people commenting what's wrong. And also, I've done some documentation, I believe. OK. OK, I am just scanning back through comments here. Somewhere, I don't remember where I put this, someone was asking how, you know, how do you get which anthems? And maybe it was on the Lotro forums itself. I'm gonna pause a moment to go refresh my memory and have a glass of water. Okay, it is not here. Where would I have put that information? Oh, I remember. When we put together this plugin, we also put together a video kind of explaining what was going on. And I believe, I think it's in the notes for that. Uh, so, Lotro, Minstrel, Out of Combat. Okay, cool. Lins Lotro, Minstrel Skills, and Ballad Expression. I'm not going to play the video. I don't think my computer would like that very much, nor the advertisement. But, let's see. Awesome. Someone asked, 
uh, in what point uh, the game can I have three anthems active at the same time? And I went ahead and dug around and we put together this answer. answer. So you're going to get uh, your first anthem, Anthem of the Third Age, based on your specialization. For instance, I have Anthem of the Third Age Resonance on right now because I'm in healing mode. If I switch on back to damage mode, redline, I'm going to have Anthem of the Third Age Dissonance. And we can see those, nope, that's wrong. We can see those here, Anthem of the Third Age Dissonance Resonance. Melody would be in yellow spec. Um, so, awesome. Anthem of Prowess is immediately bestowed if you pick, uh, pick the Protector of Song specialization. That's the yellow line. Uh, and we can see, hopefully see that here. Anthem of Prowess, yes. So, Anthem of Prowess alters Coda. Coda will cause your next three of that thing to have no cooldown. Oh, really? Oh, Dissonant Strikes. Nice. Okay, uh, and... Effect applied to the fellowship, attack faster, have more armor, have more evade. All that sounds pretty cool. Okay, Anthem of War is available in the Warrior Scald Specialization after spending 15 points in that tree. But where did I put it? Oh. Yes, I just have an improved version of that. Awesome. Anthem of War, great. And Anthem of Composure is available in the Protector of Song specialization immediately. Right over here. Great. So, Watch Over Resolve. Uh, Blue Line's probably only going to have a couple. Uh, Warrior Scald. We'll more likely have Anthem of Third Age, Anthem of War, Anthem of Composure. Neat. Uh, and Protector of Song could eventually have four anthems. It's a little bit harder. Neat. That's a, that's a nice refresher for me. I uh, appreciate uh, being able to remember where I put these little uh, breadcrumbs of information. Okay, but uh, that just means that we can go ahead and do... Uh, Anthem of Composure, for instance, right here we can see Anthem of Composure is on the list of buffs. There we go. Oh, and it lasts, yeah, okay. Um, so one of the challenges when you're trying to get the game to pop out skills is you do have to have those skills available. Yeah, that music is inspiring, but it's a little bit loud. I'm gonna bring it down, okay. Um, so, what we're going to do, probably, is take a screenshot of one of these specs. I mostly play with damage mode, so I would take a screenshot of this blue spec and my skill layout, and then just be able to restore it later. So we can pop between this and yellow, get through all the anthems. Neat. So, I'm going to take the snipping tool, uh, and go ahead and just do a window snip. There we go. And I'm gonna just save that as right. current blue line stuff. There we go. And so I can put everything back the way I need it to be. All right, so we had Anthem of Composure. We can see Anthem of the Third Age as well. Awesome. And back in Redline, we have the Anthem of War, of course, and Anthem of Third Age Distance. We can we can get all these pretty easily, especially with Cry of the uh, Chorus with a cooldown of 30 seconds. All right, so we're pretty good about replicating those. What else is of interest? Coda skill names, right. So Coda is a finishing. It will dump out your uh, ballads. Let's see. Are you attackable? No. I wouldn't want to attack a horse. There we go. So we can go ahead and fire off this coda. And we see improved coda of fury cooldown. Do we see anything else? Improved coda of fury. Okay. Now I'm curious. 
Did we see improved Coda of Fury or just the cooldown? Oh my goodness, there's so many uh, outputs here. Well, what, what are we looking for in the code? So, is valid code a skill? Skill name, valid code a skill. Okay, we're gonna have to uh, double check that and see, did we actually see um, improved code of melody or just that cooldown thing, or improved code of what, whatever it was. All right. Um, neat, neat, neat. Don't need that. Okay, so code of melody, code of fury, improved code of melody, fury, code of resonance, improved resonance. I question that order. Cool. War speech stands, in no stands, and harmony stands. Fantastic. And then cry of the chorus. All right. What's the name of the major ballad? And then yellow line trait, anthem of prowess. Okay, why do we care if we're in yellow line trait? I have to ask. Okay. Is in yellow spec, why do we care? Oh, does it, it sets the background? Fascinating. Huh, maybe that's in a mode that I'm not uh, in. I would have to dig into that, but I, I can safely ignore that because I just, I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so that's all the English names. The German names, French names are gonna be very similar. So let's get to hunting down corrections. Now, why is this important? Well, back on the Lutra interface site, we're gonna come on in, this is the patch page. What started this whole thing was that someone said, hey, if you're still active, can you maybe include my language fixes in your file? Um, I was like, oh, sure, why not? But it turns out um, that didn't uh, quite work for some people. Uh, please check the translations, stuff's wrong. Someone else was like, oh no. Uh, so we're gonna come in and, uh, and just double check ourselves. And someone pointed out, yes, uh, plugins are not up to date. Two of them seem to be deleted from the game, Compassion and Free People. Yes, and uh, there's no need to keep them in the plugin, but deleting them seems like it would cause problems. So, or at least uh, could cause problems that I'm not ready to deal with. So, uh, let's go ahead and pull up our source control. and see what did we change in that last patch? Did we add things, delete things, just change some text? What, what changed and how can we make sure we do it better? And one of the neat things about source control is we can do that. So in Lotro plugins, we're gonna come on in and, all right, when was this? Oh, that was Lotro plugins, my mistake, minstrel buffs. I have lots of different repositories. So we can uh, take a look at this. Okay, included changes. Let's go ahead and pop that open in our file comparison utility. I use beyond compare, but whatever works for you. And I'm gonna make it, well, if I make it bigger then it's over under my face, I'm gonna make it taller. And we can see that there's some white space, white space changes. Don't care about those. I'm gonna just say, don't show me. And we can come on in and say, oh, we have documentation, but what actually changed? All right, <laughs> I'm gonna come in here and start deleting some of these uh, changes because I wanna know, did something actually change? Or did they just add comments? Okay, we can see uh, him of the Rahiram. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy off into uh, just a side uh, document here. 
actual changes to verify. Okay, and that got changed to here. Oh, I guess I can uh, take the whole line. Okay, um, what else? Oh, it looks like they added in some CODA skills. Awesome. So change it, uh, changed, uh, added, and we you know those are added. What is different here? Anything besides that comma? No, it's just the comma. So we don't need to worry about that. Okay, looks like the French changes include an A hat instead of an A. So we're gonna go ahead and change, copy those off here. Actually, I'm not sure all of them did change. Okay, sometimes the color coding's a little tough here but it looks like the first and the third changed, the second and the fourth did not. Okay, so that and here. Now the funny thing is, someone could have well-intentionally saw, oh, those two are missing an A hat, we should fix that, when it could have been missing in the game itself. Uh, and so uh, that's good to double check. Okay, and then the French, we can see these were added. Was that changed? No, it was not awesome. What about this one? I will tell they just translated that, that's nice. Okay, uh, so they didn't change the actual text, just the comments, even better. So the number of things that we feel like we need to hunt down has gotten less. So, uh, in German, um, I should probably separate these by language. German <laughs> changed. Um, and then added, and then French changed, uh, added. Although, okay, yes. So these are just out of order here. Awesome. So we have our to-do list. Great. Now we can double check uh, what people were saying just to make sure that we've uh, gotten all of our to-do items. All right. All right, Jacker, Soliloquy Spirit was a thing. Let me, let me uh, make a note here. Uh, German, what is Soliloquy of Spirit called? French, uh, same thing. While we're in there, we can go ahead and take a look at the strings file that we put together. Now. Uh, the main thing is the Silico Spirit pattern, actually. So we need to fill in both of those. And then Watcher of Resolve, Silico Spirit. And the options, that's just for localizing the UI, no worries. So these are the important ones to localize for the Soliloquy Spirit Tracker to work in German and French. Okay, fantastic. Let's go ahead and save this localization stuff. Okay, so that is good. 
Um, I think that was a misunderstanding what that was, and doesn't recognize Anthem of Third Age Resonance. Yeah, let's, uh... Let's go ahead and copy that in as a... Why aren't you copying? There we go. Okay, um, please check out the German had the wrong minus. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, that always copy. Don't try to retype something you see on the screen. Always copy because there's like seven different versions of a hyphen in Unicode, and you want to make sure you have the right one. I may be exaggerating, but there's at least two or three. There's the the n dash and the m dash, and I'm I'm sure typographers know and care more about that, but for me it's just kind of a. Ah, Okay, we actually have someone who volunteered some Dutch translations. So we're gonna go ahead and incorporate those here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and double check those while we're on the German client, but that's okay. Specialization changed, neat. And then class stuff. Okay, and then options. So we just want to note here, verify, uh, well, needs verification. Let's go ahead and uh, make that a little bit more explicit. Excellent. Thank you, Lord Head, for putting moveout commands in there. Yes, uh, freebie code of fast trot. 20% mount speed code. Is that for all mounts? Interesting. Oh, I love it. This person has actually provided a sample of the text we're going for. Okay, um, so we can incorporate that and then... <laughs> oh, that's funny. The translator decided to put um, the article the before every character name. The Kusarian, the whatever. Uh, apparently, this person does not like that. Now, not not to say what someone is right or wrong, but I wonder um, where dialects come into play. Like, if someone's from far southeast Germany, is someone from far northwest Germany going to be like that? Just sounds wrong, even though it's just a dialectal difference. Or did was the uh, translator just like not very good at their job? I suspect that kind of uh, translation goes back 14 years and just no one's looked at it since, but interesting questions. Like if I could be a fly on a historical wall. Okay, what's this German? This person doesn't care about uh, that that particular answer, and that's fine. All right, I pull the quotes out. All the messages are already there. Oh, okay. This person was confused by what the other person was. Hmm. I could have copy pasted something wrong. All right. And someone's saying it is possible to play more than three anthems when switching your trait trees. Totally true. Uh, and the flexible themes don't show that in a good way. Um, is there a possibility to extend the window? There is a possibility. Um, I think, and this is uh, completely aside from the translation thing, but I have that every once in a while where um, I will be in a party with another minstrel and I will have the effect of Anthem of War on me from them um, and 
uh, maybe Anthem of Prowess as well, and that'll put me into fourth Anthem territory without me even having four Anthems. And so I think it would be neat to extend this window arbitrarily to say, uh, okay, we'll just add a, a, keep adding those spots, and when we get back down to three, we'll go back down to this normal three one. Uh, that's that's a, a not today problem though. Okay, I think we've uh, tracked down all the things we're looking for as far as translation and localization concerns are. So we got those documented here, what we want to do. Um, and this one thing, which I'm uh, not sure, Anthem of Third Age Resonance. Well, that's a great question. I am forgetful. Uh, Third Age Resonance comes from Blue Spec. Okay, let's take a look at that. Hmm. That have a notification. Remote quest. Oh, right. Cramp. Um, okay, so we have... And the third age residence. Great. Anthem of third age residence. Shows up there, okay. And I see it here as well. So, what do they say? Minshabuff doesn't even recognize Anthem of Third Age Residence. Tried to rename the effects, but no change. So we're gonna check those out in French and German. Just to be sure. Okay, German. Double check Anthem of Third Age Residence. And we're gonna go ahead and set that for French as well. Bring all those down. All right, let's do it. No, don't save those changes. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that, minimize this, and say goodbye to this little orc. So, to change client languages, you there's no option to do that from within the game. Uh, I can appreciate that there's so much text in this game that I can appreciate that they just want to load the correct set of data files and not everything else. So what that means is we're gonna go ahead and exit the game. And I'll go ahead and throw up a switching servers on here or something. Um, and actually, no, I do want you to be able to see this. So um, we're gonna pull up the launcher. Free cache and game logic, sure. And when you're in the launcher, there's a little button that says EN, if you're already in English. And if you hover over it, it will have a tooltip saying select a language, select a language, select a language. And we're gonna go ahead and switch over to Deutsch. Dutch. Doubts. All right. It wants to make changes. Oh my goodness, I forgot. You don't patch without, um, switching languages. I should have done that before the stream, my apologies. Um, so if you are interested in switching from one language to another, where'd my client go? Let's bring that back. If you're interested in switching from one language to another, you need to remember to do patches against each of those languages. Yes, I want to make changes. Let's see, let's see. Uh, it says it has 870 uh, to update, but it's going pretty spiffy. Little Redhead in chat says each language has a different patch. Um, better to say that Standing Stone Games doesn't force you to download update files that aren't relevant to your interests. Uh, this is potentially originally a bandwidth saving measure, but it's also a time saving measure. Imagine if uh, each time you did a patch, it took three times as long just in case you wanted to switch to German or French. I think 99% of the player base would be aggravated by that choice. And the 1% or fewer of us that switch on a at all basis would be like, oh, that's cool, but that wasn't really necessary. Like it's a no win scenario to do it that way. Plus for people, especially 14 years ago, uh, who have limited bandwidth uh, concerns, all right, so that has been updated. Uh, while I'm uh, thinking about it, uh, let me go ahead and double check. Great. Start doing it with French too, please. 
Yes, do the thing. So, uh, yeah, 14 years ago, bandwidth concerns were much more of a thing than they are now, right? You're talking about people who are on dial-up still. Now, I, I feel like the portion of the player base now who is playing on a dial-up equivalent 56K style modem experience is got to be really small. Like, if not less than 1%, then definitely less than 10%. Most people are using some form of broadband access. But if you're talking about literal long minutes to do the download itself, then tripling that just arbitrarily because the game happens to support languages that you don't play with, ah, that would be infuriating. It's like, I, I want to play the one that I want to do. Uh, so anyway, those are some thoughts I have. So yeah, I, I think it's totally reasonable that uh, they've split them out into different languages and you only download the languages that you use uh, or that you're trying to use. Cool, so um, I've got my username and password uh, saved off so I don't have to type them in, uh, preventing mistakes. And so uh, we've got the launcher here, launching on in, and we're gonna come on into Evernight. Now, this is where muscle memory is going to really serve me well, because I don't read German very well. I don't read Dutch very well, and I'm tr actively trying to learn that language. I definitely don't read German very well. Uh, and so for me, knowing which buttons to push is sometimes just gonna be a question of, well, where do I think I would push if this was an English client and I wasn't paying attention? And just kind of uh, trying things out. So that's, that's going to serve us well here is just being really familiar with the interface. Okay, so we're gonna come back in with Tidelos. And apparently the captioner thinks Tidelos is toddlers. Okay, well thanks, captioner. Great, we're back in Rohan, Ost Emnet, and we're gonna go ahead and work our way through the different skills. And what are we doing first? Let's go pop into our notes here. Localization stuff, excellent. So first of all, uh, while we're here, we can double check the strings. Oh, you know, what's interesting is if we come on into the plugin manager and load that, then we can see that the uh, soliloquy of spirit option is correctly picking up the German. Delightful. Um, so we have that here. Oh, um, oh, sorry, we have that here. And the drag bar title, if we go ahead and activate like this, we can see somewhere, what is it supposed to be? Selbstgespart tracker. Okay, there it is. So those localizations are already working fine. Great. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch on into blue line. If we're not already there, we are already there. Great. And let's go ahead and do a soliloquy of spirit. So we can see the Tidelos. <laughs> that that does sound funny. Um, I wonder if once upon a time the message was the player. And then eventually someone came in and said, oh, we shouldn't do the player. We should just say the player name. And they just did that across the board regardless. Like that would make more sense, right? Um, anyway, uh, speculating on that kind of thing is just a you know endless series of fascination for me. So we can see, I'm gonna go ahead and copy off this message. The titles want to, oh, so I critically succeeded, awesome. Vortile mit that. And so we can see vont, yes, dot star mit. Oh, you know, I'm seeing quotes in here. And that's going to be important. Now, quotes, yeah, I need to escape them. Um, 
Excellent. Elf on. Okay. So I'm curious about those quotes because that other person seemed to get things working. Did they have the quotes or? Oh, there we go. Okay, here's what they actually came up with. Vaunt, okay. Um, and then dot star gets the critical, yes, mint, and then quote, of, oh, nice, den or, or D, yes. That is f fantastic. Um, okay, so that looks really compelling for the German version of You Did a Soliloquy of Spirit. It didn't actually work, but it looked like it was going to work, and that's the important thing. Let's take a look. What changed? All right. Vant Vertile. Mint. I wonder about the mines, but that's fine. Uh, elf. The... Oh, you know, that dot star makes me curious. Um, let me get rid of the dot star there and instead just say that it can be one of those things and one of those things. And check that out. See if it's just a simple question of that. Well, that's not a silly good spirit. Oh, did I even say this should be on? That's hilarious. Right. Okay. Oh. Oh, that's fun. The, the, uh, the saving code for where stuff should go appears to not uh, do internationalization very correctly. That might be a thing worth uh, playing around with someday. We'll add it to the list. All right, to do. Uh, when switching between English and German plants, save file locations for Windows. Don't persist. Okay, so that's um, quite likely an easily solvable problem once we kind of dig into it. But I don't want to get distracted, so we'll just put that on the future pile. Okay, so. Oh, of course. The plugin doesn't realize that when we loaded it, we were in move stuff around mode. Hello, orc. Okay, so we can see this is working. Now, the change I made might not actually be necessary now. And the reason I made it, if you are familiar with pattern matching mechanics, is dot star is what's known as a greedy operator. It will consume as much as it can while things still match. And so having a dot star here well, there was a space there, uh, but it made me worried that it might start messing with the the swallowing of the or with the the processing of the name, uh, which is why I was hesitant. And so here, this would actually falsely match some things that we don't want. It will do d and den, but it would also do din and day. Uh, so that's that's not quite right, but it will definitely not greedily consume too much after it. So uh, in that case, maybe that's okay. Also, dot stars, I think, now Lua's, Lua's uh, pattern matching may be less complicated than regular expressions, but there's, there's a backtracking thing that I don't want to get into. And so, um, but this is working, and that's, that's an important thing. Uh, so I should double check 
the version they submitted and see if that seems to work too. So they did a dot star here. Now the funny thing is we don't actually care about dot star. We just care about dot dot. Like I will take any two. Uh, yeah, no, I've decided I don't like dot star there at all because it's really just saying take as many things and we know what it is. I, it's two things and we know specifically what each of those two things is. I, I'm gonna call it mine is objectively better in every way. Well, maybe not, but it's uh, it's definitely working and that's the important thing. So, um, awesome. And then the specialization changed. We uh, are have the benefit here that they've already told us what to look for. So we're just going to confirm that that's what we see. Uh-oh, I still have that output here and that is a lot of output. So, we have a couple of options. Um, I think I can tell it to start logging. And then, if I come on in here to, let's see, standard, yeah, that sounds plausible. Neat. Okay. Um, what I'm not seeing is, of course, that's why I had the advancement tab. Ah, okay. So um, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this combat stuff one for right now. Uh, so, well, Sean, that sounds plausible. Okay. New. And we're gonna rename this, and we're gonna call it advancement. Great. And in this, for filters, oh. Let's see. That was wrong. <laughs> Quick, what's German for advancement? Just a moment. See, this, this is, uh, if, if I was thinking more clearly, I would have set this up uh, on the English side of things. What am I looking for here? Food or, okay. Well, you know, I don't see that. But um, what I do see are a number of things that I can just go ahead and activate. Not standard. Uh, and we'll just try it again. Oh, Exo says go into chat and check the font colors. That is an excellent idea. Thank you so much, Exo. So if we come on into the settings, advancement, portrait, there we go. Beautiful, thank you. That's, that's an excellent idea. I should have thought about that. We're gonna undo all those. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's the very nice thing about switching between English and French and German clients is the UI it doesn't really change. It's just the text that's get, getting uh, shoved into the UI. So you know, if you happen to know that that is the standard channel or this is the combat channel or whatever, uh, we can see three different comps here. That maps onto the fact that there are normally three different uh, combat channels. Awesome. S uh, Spieler we know is the player. Hanger we yeah. Um, so those two, I'm not quite sure about, but this one I definitely know is, is um, me. Uh, but yeah, for sure, that, perfect. Thank you so much, Exo. Um, great. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to stop. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get distracted. I'm curious what that actually translates to roughly. So if I come back in here, go to the options. All right, tell me Google, what do you think portrait means? Progress or advancement? Perfect. Okay, so 
Um, we want to go ahead and follow that. So we're going to start logging that. And then we'll be able to come on in here. I don't care about this anymore. What I care about is... Wait, where are you going? Advancement. There we go. Now, if you are using a um, modern text editor, then oftentimes it will have an option to reload your file if it changes and you don't have any cha unsaved changes. So when I come back in here, it just automatically reloaded the file. And that's very handy. Okay, so we were told to look for, um, it had these uh, bonus eigenschaft, awesome. So, is that the only one we saw? Yeah, we only saw that, perfect. Let's go ahead and save off this. We have these bonus eigenschaft for collagen, spacious, great. And the real question is, is this what we saw uh, in our menstrual effects? Oh, we weren't looking for that. Of course, we were looking for the other one. Let's go ahead and switch. Great. No. And we're going to go ahead and in strings, save the one that we're actually looking for. There we go. And in min, oh, it might actually be in strings. Yes, there we go. Uh, we can see the dot and the new line. Awesome. Okay, so needs verification, done. Needs verification, done. And the rest of the German. We saw that in the log. Okay. Fantastic. So that's those German stuff done. We checked these. Anthem of the Third Age Residence. Let's go ahead and check that out. We'll go ahead and get it into the combat log. I disabled the combat log. Oh my goodness. Let's go ahead and grab my combat over from here. And let's go ahead and copy that text here and search for it here. Okay, we see the text that we're looking for. Excellent. Oh, you know, I do see a long dash versus a short dash here. Delightful. Uh, so we're going to get a chance to take a look for that. No, I believe that this is backwards. That was blue trait line. This is yellow trait line. So we're going to go ahead and new special is there. One gold. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's fine. And we're going to specialize yellow. And here we can go ahead and double check the spelling of melody. And we can see that did indeed bring in a wider hyphen. So that was definitely a bug. Now, real question, who made the mistake? Did I make the mistake in copying it or, and, and it doesn't really matter, but I'm wondering where the, the issue crept in, right? Like, did I do something wrong or was this just, you know, someone else So if I copy in here, we can see that none of those seem 
be particularly wide. Yeah, okay. Fascinating. I've hyphens, man. Uh, you gotta you gotta watch out for them. Okay, so we have uh, checked resonance and melody. Now we can go ahead and pop back to a red stance and check the hymn dissonance. Okay, and that looks great. So we've double checked the Anthem of the Third Age of Resonance. All right, now, Hymn of the Rohirrim. We know that that is a war mount activity, so let's pop on up and see what we can find. Coda, Hymn. All right, Hymn of the Rohirrim. Great, let's go ahead and pop that open. This activates, uh, acts a lot like an anthem. And we can see that it is hymnum, the, it is plural there. Great. Now, Funny thing is, um, we can see that the other two might not be hymnon. So let's go ahead and pop open hymna, okay, and hymna. That is wild to me. All right, are there any bad uh, things around? You look bad. There's a war band there, but I don't know that I really want to get involved with the war band. Oh, you know. The thing that allows half of my mouse buttons to work is not on. Let's go ahead and fix that. That's just happening on the other monitor here. Just a moment. Ice asks, do I work for Lotro? Excellent question. I do not. In fact, let me go ahead and type in a little command here. I am just a volunteer. I am a person who's very fond of plugins. And so that's what we're doing here today on Plugin Along is um, checking out how to improve the Minstrel Buffs plugin. Uh, that being said, I know some things about Lotro and some things about SSG. So if you do have questions, feel free to pop them into chat there. Uh, but if you have support needs, I am unable to help you with that. Okay, so we found this boar. Ah, I need to stop feeding things so quickly. Maybe I need to take off some equipment or go to a higher level area. Okay, great. All right, well, we've got the Hema of the Ritter Mark. And we do see it is Hymna. Excellent. Really? Stop it. Okay. I'm apparently still in combat with something. Maybe it'll come back. That's actually very uh, handy, though, because it means I can try out these other uh, and. Uh, Hymns? Yes, hymns. All right, so we have the hymn to Rittermark. Excellent. We have the hymnen de Rahim. Excellent. And we have hymna de Rokunorita. Okay. Him of morning red, the red dawn. Yeah, okay. Um, so those all look great. I'm gonna just copy them from here and double paste them into here. And we can confirm 
we've uh, checked out those. So this looks like a great change, perfect. Okay, we have codas. Oh my goodness, what's a hell tongue resist? It's probably stance. Placed in, oh yes, yes. Um, so that's a meta, great. And then in stance melody, okay. So let's take a look. And if we come on in, we have the, no, Verbesa Coda, okay. Which one is this? Let's pop back into the effects where it shows up. And this is Coda Skill Names. And Ah, improved Coda of Resonance. That's probably what it is. I'm guessing if we were to pop that into Google Translate, it would say improved. There we go. Okay. Uh, so the improved Coda of Melody. Great. Do I have an improved Coda? Oh, I need a target. You know, I think I might be better off finding a uh, a target dummy at this point, just so I can be in combat as much as I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop back to Bree. Um, Right, so a thing that I'm realizing is I'm not sure. Okay, I did type in Brie. Okay, that's on Rice, which is um, travel. Excellent. So we're gonna go actually to personal housing if I can find it. Great. Okay, I don't see housing there. So in Dutch, it'd be H-U-I-N-S. Uh, yeah, there we go. Rice zu eren eigen heim. Okay. Fortunately, there's enough, just enough crossover with my knowledge of Dutch and my, uh, that can help me with German. Okay. So, welcome to House von Tidalus. And my Ubang's Puppin Stunder. Now, a downside is, oh, I can get on a warm I bet I can't use it here though. Um, but right now, what I wanted to see was the different codas. Interesting. Why don't I have an improved coda, or do I? Well, that's okay. What I see here is coda de but. Excellent. <laughs> Where well shows that is absolutely glorious in German. I know. I I wish one of one of the reasons I wish uh, the client was available in, in Dutch was would be both to help my learning of Dutch, but also because I you know. I, I would like to see what uh, they come up with for some of these things. Like Ubung's Puppin Stunder. And I apologize for my pronunciation of Dutch vowels. I am confident they're not quite right. Okay, we have different codas that we're looking at though. Let's come on in. Oh, I had to get out of combat. Ugh. Can I sneak my way out? Nope. Okay. I've spotted a downside of using the uh, the combat dummy. Okay, um, localization stuff. You know, I'm going to say that since that is the text for improved, that I'm pretty comfortable with the idea that since 
Codedermality is there, and Codeder Resonance is there, and Codeder Voot is here. That the improved versions of them, that sounds great. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And since no one's commented on that so far, let's call that good. Okay. I went out right away from that thing. That was a terrible idea. No. Apparently that uh, thing is hefty. Okay. Uh, what I think I'm probably gonna do is go to a higher level area where I can't kill things in one go as easily. Um, maybe a mission. That might be a reasonable thing. Hmm? Yeah, maybe a world of willow or something like that too. Um, as soon as I can get out of combat with that thing. I'm so used to being in combat with a training dummy at like level 50 or something. I haven't really tried it recently. Uh, so we're going to come down to, you know what, I will go back to what I'm used to calling Snowburn, but in the German. Do I need a hunter to get me around? Fortunately, I do have a lot of travel skills. So, welcome to Schneegrenze. And now, the real question is, what are things called? <laughs> Whoa. Willow? What's the German for willow? Let's find out. Willow. Vita. Okay. Plag der Vita. There we go. I'm going to pop this open at like 120. Like I want to be able to kill things and not be killed. So we're going to pop on in here and we'll see how many times I die during this stream. Can you hear the voiceover? Excellent. Thanks, Marigold. Okay. Wait. Where is Marigold? Well, that's fine. Um, okay. So. Those things are still one-shottable, so that's not going to be too useful here. Uh, so, but that, that does tell me that uh, when I want to test non warm mount stuff, it won't be a problem. I mean, I can't leave. Let me out. Okay. So, at this point, um, German testing is good. And so, what I want to do next is switch on over to French. And we have landscape stuff here in Snowburn, or whatever the French equivalent is. And also, we'll be able to do instancy stuff when we need to stay in combat to try things out. And specifically, I think I might want to set up this combat. Um, so it only is doing my stuff and not the opponent's stuff. Uh, excellent. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and switch to French. So to do that, we need to Spiel Verlassen, exit the game. And then we'll be able to start up a, a new client where we can switch that language again. I'm just gonna go ahead and ca uh, cache, and then Francois. And as bad as my German pronunciation is, I am confident my French is worse, so I will try very little of it. All right, so um, we have updated. And so I'm going to relaunch so that my password is already in there. There we go. And we're going to come back in to Evernight. The MMO Slayer says, I miss Lotro. Too bad Amazon dropped the reincarnation. Yeah, I don't know a lot about what Amazon was trying to do, but I do know that 
Lord of the Rings Online has had 14 years to both uh, create content and uh, kind of match itself to what the community seems to expect from a Lord of the Rings MMO, as, as best as one can in, in an imperfect world. And so, you know, to start from scratch, to say we're going to build an MMO from scratch, and to not have a vastly empty world on launch where you have a few quest hubs with just endless rolling planes with nothing in there because it just takes time to populate that with decent content. Like that is a challenging job. That is, that is something that requires commitment, like multiple years of development and producing content to even get to a point where you're like, we have a world and you can talk to people and, and there are quests and this is a distinct enough experience from some of the Lord of the Rings Online where it's worth coming in and starting to invest your time here. So I don't know what Amazon was hoping to do with their Lord of the Rings game, but it's a it's it's challenging to compete against um, people who have been around for a while. Now I know Amazon also has a TV program in development, uh, and I know some people are very excited, and so it'll be it'll be interesting to see how that comes together, like. There are promotional photos. Presumably there's filming that's been done. Is that going to get canceled before we see anything or are we actually going to see episodes in September? One can hope. Okay, so here we are on the French client. My mouse DPI seems to have gone wonky. So I'm going to try to refresh that. Uh, my mouse is just moving more slowly than I'm used to. So the MMO Slayer, I'm curious, what what were you looking forward to from an Amazon Lord of the Rings property? What would uh, what niche would that have filled for you? Okay, so here we are. We can see that we are indeed in the French client, and so now we can go ahead and work our way through that list. So first of all, what is the little quote of spirit called? Let's go into the strings and start doing this. Okay, first of all, we're gonna go ahead and switch stance. Oh, I'm in yellow stance. All right, we're gonna do whatever we need to do here first. Apparently it's expensive to change at this level. All right, we'll be back. Soliloquy of Spirit. Double check Anthem of the Third Age Residence. Great. Where are we? Anthem of the Third Age Dissonance. That one's gonna change on stances. So I can't remember if residence is yellow. Let's go find out. Anthem. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, it's not Anthem. Him. Him. Okay. Oh. Oh, I didn't actually commit any trade points, so I can switch back and forth. Oh, that's delightful. Okay. We're going to come on in here. And check this out. So we have a textual challenge. We want to make sure that what we see is correct. So we're going to come on in and in the menstrual effects, search for this. Now we're seeing him to do, uh, again, I'm going to pause there, but we do see a melody and we see an exact textual match for what we saw in the log. Now the important thing is actually in the standard log um, for which we will need to load the plugin or charger the plugin. And here is what we're actually comparing against. So if for some reason that was different in the combat log than the standard log uh, in the effects list, that would throw us off. But we're seeing an exact match all right, MMO Slayer says Lotro came out in 2017. Yeah, it's antiquated now. Interesting. The new Amazon game would have hopefully filled that void, but the storyline, but the graphics, animation, combat, etc., are outdated. So, out of curiosity, would you give up all of the content for a prettier game, for graphics and animation and combat that is 
um, fresh to whatever metric that you're, you're considering, uh, a modern feeling game, but a world that's kind of empty feeling because there's not been enough time for the content side of things. Would that be a, a worthwhile experience or what, uh, what, yeah. As long as it follows the IP slash storyline. Is there enough content in just the, the core storyline? The, the equivalent of the Lotro epic line, I suppose that would be. Um, but, you know, retold in a different manner. Is there enough content there to really flesh out an MMO? Or would that be more like, were they doing an MMO? Or was it just a Lord of the Rings game of some sort? Okay, Amazon was doing an MMO. MMOs are hard because the massively multiplier also kind of implies a massive world. Like an MMO of Bree Town would be a, perhaps a disappointing product. Scrapped it because of intellectual property issues. Interesting. I haven't really dug very much into it. Um, so I don't, I don't know the story behind what they were trying to do or why it fell apart. Uh, the, yeah. Uh, I do know that Standing Stone Games behind Lotro or Little Rings Online definitely has to straddle that line between what they have access to and what they can just hint at because they don't have the rights to. And they have obviously 14 years of, of practice with that and have managed to, uh, to walk that fine line between fleshing out a world with what they have and referencing but not using the things that they can't. Okay, so we have the hymn of the Third Age Melody. And we're looking specifically for the A hat there. Um, now, if we come on into our skills here, we can see uh, hymn of the Third Age, hymn of the Third Age. There's definitely an A hat on the other two. So let's come into our skills, hymn. Of the third age, we see an A hat there. Excellent. So let's go ahead and activate that. There we go. And, oh, wrong place. Let's go ahead and come on in. So we can see that we're getting an exact textual match and in game it's consistently A hat. And I, I'm sorry, I forget the, the, the correct name for that particular mark. Actually, there's a Wikipedia page that I do like to go to. Um, it is, let's see. Diacritics, right. So if you go to a Wikipedia page, for instance, for diacritics, there's a whole division of them um, based on where they appear and how they're used and whatnot. And let's see, where's the little A hat? Circumflex, okay, A circumflex or circumflex A. Okay, so we have um, verified that the A hats are good. Circumflexes, ah, I'm gonna keep calling them A hats. Okay, and now we want to go look at the, uh, now this is again the advanced version and I'm not sure why I'm not seeing that, possibly because I'm not spending trait points. Let's come on in here. Coda of Resonance. Coda, okay. Well, interesting. Well, that doesn't look the same at all. But I am curious, is there a sensible translation of what we're seeing there? So we're gonna pop on in. Google Translate's useful for broad strokes stuff. And pull up French. It's off my screen. 
and then swap which one's which. Interesting. I'm reasonably confident that that's not correct, that that's not what we would want to see here. Because we are seeing Yeah, let me go on in, not to advancement, but to the standard chat that we started logging long ago. And let's take a look. Oh, I wonder. Maybe you can only be uh, doing one at a time. All right, so let's go ahead and Yeah, okay. I was looking for the German text for some reason. That's not, not going to help. Okay. Oh, of course, it's going to go to a different named file. Uh, 2133. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so we see resonance and coda de com resonance. And that really suggests that the way the French strings are is not correct. But I don't feel confident enough to do something about that right now. So what I'm going to do is just make a note mentally that is the case. In fact, not even mentally. Where's my to do file? French. Codas seem wrong. How are they supposed? How are codas supposed to be used? And is that happening in French? So that that's a thing that requires research. Going in and figuring out what what behavior of the plugin is based on this string and is that happening? Are we missing some some piece of the puzzle? I think right now, based on what, what I'm seeing, that's not working in the French client. Okay, Little Redhead says, I like the look of Lotro a lot. I feel like I'm wandering around in a painting. That's that's very uh, a, a fair thing, is the, the look of the game to me, and I'm not running in the highest resolution uh, because my computer does not like um, high quality game and recording and streaming and all that. But um, yeah, I am very comfortable as a player not being in a hyper-realistic, uh, photorealistic style environment. I, I am fine with, it's not a cartoony look, but definitely not a, not a, a, a life-like representation either. Like it's, it's, it's a little abstract and I'm very comfortable with that. To me, this, uh, this is, is a fine way to represent Middle Earth. And I, I can appreciate that's a very personal decision. I also am not a, someone who's always playing the newest uh, games that are coming out. So uh, I may be a little bit disconnected with what is uh, the newest, hottest uh, way that games are presenting themselves, that are doing things like combat, uh, that are doing things like, uh, well, all of it. So uh, for me, the aesthetic of the game is, is, is absolutely fine for what it's trying to do. Okay, so we have a note here that French is maybe not right, but um, if it is wrong, it's not because of something we did. <laughs> so, you know, promising. Okay, um, so what else did we have? Uh, we're gonna go ahead. Oh, right, um, that was something that they had added in uh, for that volunteer stuff. So I think they even said they weren't sure it was right, but it was missing before which means it's not any worse than it was. Okay, so the last thing is the blue line stuff. So we wanna go ahead and switch back in here, we, and go ahead and duck into blue. And so I guess this is a money saver. If all you need is the auto bestowed stuff from specializing in, if you jump out and back in, it's going to re-ask you to specialize. So that's convenient. Okay, so we have What 
is the name that, of the thing that I'm looking for? Esprit de Soliloque. Okay. Tethos. There we go. So the basic text that we're looking for, and we can go ahead and document this, is... So, fr equals something. We're going to work on that. Now, I'm going to assume that that translates to something reasonably uh, proper. Tithos has applied a benefit with spirit of soliloquy. Tithos. Yeah, sure. Uh, that has the basics. So we, we have the target. That's definitely something we want to capture. And we have the, uh, the stuff that we want to avoid. Now, what we don't have is things like a critical success. So let's go ahead and apply this again and just uh, do it a couple of times and see what changes. Eventually, one should uh, critically succeed. <laughs> one would hope. <laughs> Give me a crit of some sort. Let me see what's different. Oh, good, the heels are starting to uh, crit. Sometimes just getting the game to uh, cooperate is a bit of a challenge. There we go. Okay, so we have a critical heel as well. So we can see, um, and where this is going to fall down is if there's a gendered uh, grammatical construct here. I'm only playing uh, with a, uh, a female character, and so any male-based uh, grammatical changes are not going to be represented here. I'm going to cross my fingers and hope we're not going to stumble into those, but that is something to care about, to watch out for. Uh, you can do more complicated things like specify this is the male version, this is the female version, and check the gender of the character when, you, uh, when the plugin loads. These are things you can do. Uh, but for now, we're just going to try to dance around it, just like we did with the German, um, if we see anything that might be a problem. So let's go ahead and start constructing what we're looking for. We're looking for a name of the target, and we know that this critique uh, is not um, always going to be there. So we want to be able to, to knock that uh, out. So, whoops, okay, that part is good. What about the rest of this? Okay, so that looks like a, like a plausible pattern, except we don't actually care about the name. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and start with A. We can even start with space. A, up okay. A benefit, um, excellent. So that looks like a plausible pattern. Now, the specialization change, we should go ahead and see if we can get that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the advancement tab and I'm gonna go ahead and start debut the logging there. And let's go ahead and pull that up. So that is gonna be uh, in documents, motoring is online, and it'll just be the latest advancement saving. Excellent. So we can see uh, we have started logging. And I'm going to go ahead and change out of blue line because it's the changing into blue line that we care about. But there we go. Here's the thing while we're waiting for that cooldown to happen. Here's the thing that's likely to be it. Um, so you have um, acquired the trait bonus, the specialization class stuff. Now that um, special space character in there has me a little worried, uh, but it's okay. The thing we care about is probably right here. So uh, time has uh, accumulated. So let's go ahead and switch on over. to blue. Excellent. And then you have 
There we go. Trait bonus. And we can see there's a lot of consistency here. That's very nice. And so what we're really looking for is this pattern. But just like before, we want to capture the thing that we're going into. And then we are seeing a period and a new line at the end of that. Perfect. Okay. Now, the Watcher of Resolve sure seems like this. I forget what we use that for. Uh, oh, yes, we use that for uh, seeing this text. So in French, that's going to be here with a new line at the end. So the liquid of spirit itself, let's go ahead and I forget why we uh, need that specific one, but we have Esprit de Siloquin. Okay. We have the name of that ability. And in options, I don't have a French translation for that. Uh, and for the drag bar title, I don't have that either. And that's okay. So localization stuff, we have all four of those. So we're done with changes. None. So we can go ahead and close that. Now we, do, we should test that. So we're gonna go ahead and come back into the plugins menu. Thanks, Moobot. World Builder chats with scenario are there. We're gonna try to reload the plugin. Good. We uh, oh, not good. Oh, the right. It's uh, struggling to load the save file. So uh, we do ha still have that problem, and maybe we'll be able to fix that today. So it's sort of a leisurely tour through. Um, the plugin as seen through other languages. Okay, so we can see the use soliloquy tracker did not get localized. Neither did the soliloquy tracker drag bar title. But if I go ahead and use soliloquy spirit, we can see it properly detects that it's been used on me. Neat. Now, a real question is, does it see a difference between me and someone else? Now, I don't recall if I can use this on someone in town. I'm just gonna go try that out. But you can always pop into somewhere like Bree or 21st Hall or somewhere else and see if you can do that. All right. Nope, I was not able to put it onto that random one. How about you? Nope, okay. So if I were to come in and try to get a travel skill, what would that look like? There we go. Bree? Bree sounds good. Well, maybe Lolly is more good. Okay, I'm going to go see if I can throw this on someone else just to verify that that part works. In a uh, more robust testing scenario, I might have a dedicated second account standing by, but since I'm only, only going to do this, say, once over the course of two hours, I'm just going to see if I can, if I can find some random target. All right, let's hop on out. I feel like Claudia's market was way faster than Breetown. There we go. All right, I see someone running in the distance. Do I see any other random people that I can target? There we go. They're loading, hooray. Great, so we can see, holy moly. That is a long name. One, 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 one. I am not sure what hijinks one can do to make that happen, but it's delightful. Okay, uh, great. Everything's working great. It's detecting the soliloquy of spirit in French, uh, and we can feel pretty confident that at the least we haven't broken anything more. Uh, we can also see that the ballads uh, and anthems are being detected fine, or would be if I had any more. Let's go ahead and switch on over. We oui. Great. 
And we'll go ahead and switch on into red line while we're waiting for that to cool down. Okay, so with Cry of the Chorus, we can go ahead and start doing our anthems. And we run into the problem where we do have a fourth anthem. Uh, and everything that is over the line for the timer bar is just cut off. But the icon itself does show up, and that's pretty cool. So that's kind of what it looks like uh, with four anthems. And you can see why someone was like, yeah, this doesn't look great. Because A, the, the timer is not showing up, although you do know it, it is to the right of other things with a long uh, time bar. And you can hover over and see how much time is left. But it's still a little uh, disconcerting. Okay, well, that all looks great. And so we can go ahead and release this as an updated patch for the French and German uh, clients. Now, we're running up here against the end of the stream time. So I may do that offline between times or maybe first time next week, depending on uh, how much other stuff uh, pops up in the meantime. But uh, in the meantime, if you have questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, whatever that you want to throw in the chat, let's go ahead and do that while I am kind of double checking what we set out to do and what we have done. Hmm. You know, it might be worth getting the French codas right and getting the language saving, uh, the, the, the switching files thing right, too, if we're going to do an, uh, a language-based patch. So I think that makes sense to focus on that next week. Uh, localization is always an important topic. I'm very happy to cover it multiple times in a row. Uh, so I think that's a good reason to hold off on releasing. Better to release a, a comprehensive patch that addresses all of the outstanding language issues than kind of piecemeal one at a time and people have to keep updating, I think. But let's go ahead and pop open our source control utility and take a look at what changes might have actually happened. Okay, so in the Minshevoff window, we have a localization stuff file. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. We're done with it. To do. Good to uh, know for later. Uh, in fact, that reminds me we should have a read, uh, readme file change so we can track what we're doing here. Let's go ahead and put these in reverse chronological order so that the most recent changes are at the top. And let's go ahead and do an increment um, so fixed a few uh, French and German translation strings incorrect translation strings. Great. Did we actually do that? Let's come in. You know, I actually don't think. Oh yes, the hyphen here. Okay, fixed a an incorrect German translation string, but I expect to uh, uh, do the French codes as well next week. French codas. Okay. Um, in fact, I'll, yeah, I'll just uh, leave that in the to do file. Okay, we fixed incorrect German translation string. Great. Um, anything else? In the strings file, we can see we added German and French stuff. Awesome. So, added German and French strings for soliloquy, soliloquy of spirit. 
cracker. No, still need French strings for UI. Just in case someone thinks it's completely done. Okay, so we've done that. Um, what else? I'm gonna stage that. Okay, I think it's currently safe to discard those changes. And we're gonna leave this dump fu fu uh, function here. It's very useful. And we're gonna save the GD stuff. Awesome. And fixed German the string added French and German for silico spirit. Awesome. So we've got that. We also We also have just added some comments here, and that's not worth putting into the readme file. But we can document it for ourselves. Added comments for valid effects. Okay, neat. So that's, those are the changes we've made so far. We can even push them on out to the third party server, and then we're good. So. That's how we're building up an incremental set of changes here. And so next week, what I wanna focus on is those two things that we've seen are still a problem. The, when you are switching between different language clients, specifically English and non-English, there's stuff in the files that goes uh, wrong. <laughs> and we can see that, um, let's see, is our standard tracking error? Yes, okay. So, when I come on in to the plugins, unload, reload, um, things are fine here, but when I save and load again, we can see this right here, uh, this error message. Let me hide this. Uh, we can see there's an error loading a plugin file. Well, that's easy enough to track down, actually. If we come into plugin data, uh, we just follow the path, uh, account, Evernight, uh, character name, Mr. Buff plugin data, we can open that up, and it says there's a problem at line three. Is there? That's a really short line. So what we're seeing is actually this. And this is something uh, way back early on in the Plugin Along archives uh, and uh, on some of the accompanying blog posts, we'll see here is a problem. This is a correct way to format a number if you're in the European Union mostly. Uh, that is the equivalent, that radix point, uh, there is a comma, but in English that's the equivalent of 1.0, um, 100.0. These are the equivalent of decimal numbers just the radix point is a comma instead of a period. But Lua sees that as a tuple of two numbers, one and zero, a hundred and zero, a hundred and zero, and it says, well, that's not right. You can't do that. And so it's a syntax error for that to be stored that way in the file. So we need a couple of changes. We need either it to be stored as quotes or to be stored as a a decimal number in the file and then reinterpret it as a, as a common number. There's a couple different ways around this, right? And we've seen this before and we'll, we'll go ahead and do it again next time. But this is the problem, is the way that we're saving that number is just wrong. So if I were to unload this and come back in and replace those commas with periods, the file would load, but then the plugin would parse those as not correct because uh, in, in the um, Lua world, because we're working on 64-bit uh, Lotro, it's expecting to see that number as one comma. And so the other option is don't store the decimal points. <laughs> what are we doing? And then if I loaded that, um, it might be fine. Let's see, come over here, come over there, unload. What do we got? Let's go ahead and store that as 400 
and 200 no decimal points and load that. And we can see it does load in the right position. The problem is how we're writing out those decimal points. So we have fixes. We're going to look at them next time. The to-do file also says French code is seen wrong. That's just uh, a thing that we'll need to load the French client and play around with. But again, maybe start on the English client first to figure out what are we looking for? How do I get those improved codes? I don't remember. I'll have to look and not on the French client. So um, step one, how do I get my improved codes? Step two, what does that look like in combat chat slash effect list? A really effect list. In the effect list, step three, repeat on the French client. So that's that's the debug steps that I'm going to do next time. Okay. Uh, now it is possible, I think, to have a, a two clients running, one in English and one in French, but not with the same account. You, of course, need two accounts if you're going to have two clients running on your machine. You might do this more practically for, say, having um, a, a musical group and you have like four different parts on your machine and you're you're managing all of them. If you do that, I recommend you know shrinking the window down as much as possible. Don't make your your machine work too hard. But um, you do need multiple accounts for that. Uh, and you might be able to have one in English and one in French and do side by side comparisons. I haven't tried that. Um, okay, neat. Well, in that case, I'm not seeing any questions in chat, and we're just about at the hour here. All right. Um, well, I do appreciate you indulging me in this um, more, I wouldn't say cerebral, but this more, less, less productive feeling aspect of things. Localization and translation are some of those, uh, I've seen them referred to as taxes that developers pay. Uh, this is a phrase I think um, Raymond Chen, uh, a blogger at Microsoft, uh, introduced into my head many years ago, maybe a decade ago, is that there's some things that you do as a programmer because it gets your stuff done. You know, you make a window appear, you make a button appear, you you spit out text, whatever. Those are the fun things. And then there there are the, the taxes, the kind of the maintenance things that you do to be a good citizen of the of, of whatever infrastructure you're in. Uh, back in the olden days of Windows, where there was one program that got to work at a time, you know, it was about being a uh, uh, friendly in that kind of an infrastructure. Here, it's about, hey, support French, support German, do these other things, have a meaningful options screen uh, screen instead of just doing everything at the command line, you know, stuff like that. Things that don't directly make your, your plugin go, but are just really important parts of being uh, in the plugin ecosystem. So next week, we're going to continue to pay our taxes on minstrel buffs, making it work even better for the French client. Uh, and that's all we're going to cover today. <laughs> So thank you so much for joining me on this exploration of Lotro plugins, specifically localization and translation. I do hope to see you next week. And until then, keep plugging along. All right, bye-bye now.